It's showtime! At this point, you've probably already seen the title of the video, and you may already be asking, what could he possibly mean by a normal attack curse? Well, what I mean in this case is that every time we get a character that has a really interesting and unique normal attack, they are pure garbage! Just to be clear, the attacks, not the characters themselves. Now let me just preempt two things that I know people are going to be furiously typing in the comments below if I don't mention them. One, if you're playing co-op domains with three other people, you're going to be using your normal attack because you basically are going to have nothing else to do. That is, unless your character would much rather they be doing a charge attack like many characters would prefer to do, especially bow characters. Two, meta is not mandatory. You can play something that is as viable as Tusser is likable. That is to say, not at all. However, the Dia release has showed us one thing. People who say pull for character, not for meta, absolutely and unsurprisingly do in fact have a limit, even though I wasn't sure a lot of them did. There are many out there who truly love and enjoy playing objectively underperforming characters, and it doesn't bother them in the slightest. There's only so how weak you can make something or how barely functional it can be before everybody has a problem with it. If you're a diehard Dia fan and you're afraid that this is going to be the 600th video you watch this week just crapping on Dia, I promise you, this is not that. Dia is merely featured in this. She is just one of many who suffer from this problem of having really amazing animations with no damage or no support in the kit to actually encourage you to use them. Let's go all the way back to the beginning to the very first one that made everyone go why and still reverberates to this day. That is the Geodaddy Zhongli himself. There's a good chance that many of you out there have probably already had the experience of building Zhongli as a physical DPS with a Crescent Pike craftable polar. Zhongli's fast and stylish attacks lend really well to anything that adds a flat bonus, especially due to the four multi-hit attack of his fifth hit in his chain. The synergy this had with the Crescent Pike made it a very obvious pick for many people just starting out. If Zhongli was one of the only five stars you had, there's a good chance this was actually comparable as DPS. And not only that, but you're playing basically an unkillable tank as your damage dealer. But if you ask me, the real benefit is just being able to see Zhongli's cool ass normal attacks and actually have them do something. Granted, that doesn't last forever. Eventually you get higher up in the world levels and that just falls off. And that leads to people trying things like Cryo Zhongli, which Shenhe. Much like his synergy with the Crescent Pike, his fast attack speed and multi-hit really synergizes with Shenhe, albeit not perfectly given her ammo mechanic, and it will run out of ammo before you actually finish Zhongli's multi-hit on his fifth hit. Basically, any time we get a new infusion character, you can probably Google Zhongli and the element of the new infusion we got, and there's probably a bunch of videos of people doing it. I think people just want to use as attack because it's just awesome. Oh, and you may never have noticed, but did you know that not all of Zhongli's attacks actually use the polearm you have equipped? His first, fourth, and fifth attack use what appears to be a geo-constructed polearm. Back in the day, I remember people talking about that they suspected that at some point in Zhongli's development, this must have meant something more, and he may have actually been attacking with geo damage for those attacks. That could have been pretty cool, but I'm just waiting for the day that we finally have a character that can infuse geo onto other people. Later on, we will get Kazuha for the low price of one two thousand dollars. You can use his pretty cool auto attacks to at least something of a decent effect. I think. I mean, I don't own it. Probably never will. It'd be cool. Like I. I get it, most of his attacks are pretty damn normal looking. They're not exactly the most special things for a sword user, but I particularly find the finisher just really nice looking. And I, I don't know. I just think it would be kind of nice if we could do that without a C6. Now Inazuma, this is where I think things really started to get interesting as they were willing to play with normal attacks more and even throw in some weapons that the character wasn't even wielding. And I'm not talking about the same thing like Zhongli did where he used a pole arm, just not the one you have equipped. But we'll get to that one. Raiden Shogun, while her normal attacks themselves may not be anything special for the most part, what really makes her stand out from most other polearm characters is that they did away with the crappy charge attack that I pretty much hate and gave her a special one. The main issue here is that her polearm attacks are pretty well known to be absolutely worthless. There's really no incentive to actually do them unless something is extremely low health and you're just trying to proc her skill, which in that case, any character could be doing it. It doesn't have to be Raiden Shogun herself. And her charge attack? That's even less useful than her normal attack. It's a real sad fate for what is one of the most unique and interesting polearm charge attacks we have. Next up is Toma, and while he certainly doesn't have anything that makes him stand out like Raiden Shogun does with her very unique charge attack, I just think he overall has a very, very awesome looking normal attack string. I don't know why, but it really stands out to me among any other polearm user. And while I think characters like Xiao and Rosaria, and even like Shang Ling, for example, have really cool attack strings, maybe it's just me really liking polearms, I think Toma still manages to stand out above the rest. The one thing really hurts 
targeting Toma's auto attacks is one thing that you're going to be seeing a lot on the remainder of this list. And that's due to the fact that if you're building Toma for a shield, you're going to want to stack HP, meaning the attack is going to be extremely low, leaving this criminally unsupported attack to be even less viable in practical scenarios. And with no self pyro infusion in sight, there's really little hope for it. And speaking of HP scaling characters that have really cool attacks that are completely unsupported by the rest of her kit, next up we have Yolan, because while her attack chain may not be doing anything extraordinarily interesting, it does have a couple really cool attacks that, albeit, look very unrealistic, but who really cares about realism in a game where we have characters whose ankles don't have bones? The attack that I'm referring to is the second last one in her chain, it's then followed up by that attack that just generates arrows out of nowhere, doesn't even have to do anything with her bow. Yolan's problem is even worse than Toma's. She scales entirely off of HP with her base attack being the only thing that scales off of attack percent alone. The bright side is that Yolan as a base character does such overwhelmingly high damage that you can play her on field with these crappy attacks and still drive her burst and out damage a lot of other characters. Now it doesn't make any sense because another character will always do more than she can because they'll still be activating her burst and doing what they do, but you could do it if you want, so arguably you can get away with it, but there's really nothing to encourage it. You know, except for her C6, but again, Again, a lot of money. Now, Koki is the first case, to my knowledge anyway, of a character using a weapon that is not their own, or at least even a playable weapon type in the game, and that is throwing knives. It's also not the only special thing about Koki's attacks. If you look closely, you actually notice that she's holding her sword, similarly to some people would hold a knife in combat. What really makes it special is the attack with the throwing knives, or kunai. The only downside, other than the obvious about she being an HP scaling character who now also uses a lot of EM, and neither of these particular particularly benefiting her non-infused normal attacks, the downside is that this kunai attack has no special properties. It doesn't have a multi-hit that can shotgun, it's not multi-hit period, it's just a plain basic attack with a special animation, but that still is pretty cool, it's just a shame that it's utterly useless. She's an HP scaling character with no infusion, so there's literally no point to do this. At least until we get Electro Chung Yun. Since she's a free-to-play character, most people have probably familiarized themselves with Kale's normal attacks, at least in some way, and you probably noticed that for her third and final attacks, she's actually throwing boomerangs, or rather shooting them out of her bow? If you look at it when it's slowed down here to an unbearable frame rate, you can see that it basically looks like she is shooting it out of her bow. I mean, it's happening with her bow hand, the hand she's holding her bow in, so it would make more sense if she's shooting it than actually throwing it. But whatever, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't need to make sense, I do think it is pretty cool that she's attacking with a weapon that is used in her other abilities. I do hope that this and other characters with similar things mean that they're going to be more willing to do weird things. It would have been awesome if all of Kale's normal attacks were actually boomerang attacks and the bow is nothing more than a stat stick. The unfortunate thing is that even if we get a character that can infuse Dendro onto others, they're usually excluding bow characters, so Kole will not be able to benefit from this. You know, and she has charge attacks, which are always Dendro. Oh, and Dory. Probably the most tragic case of this of every character, because the sad thing is, is Dory's attacks are actually supported within her kit. Her C6 infuses them with Electro and then causes them to do some healing, which is arguably what she she's there to do, apply Electro and heal people. However, a major issue is a three second infusion on a slow Claymore attacking character with no innate interruption resistance leads to a very bad feeling character to use on field, which is extremely sad because these animations are absolutely adorable. I think that she's a contender for some of the best attack animations in the entire game. It's just, I genuinely want to try it. I got Dory, I rolled for her C6 because I wanted to use it so badly. I just found it very unsatisfying and that's being generous. A little bit of built-in interruption resistance could have gone a long way with as well as having just faster than normal claymore attack. But oh well, you can only expect so much from a four star. Like Candace, I don't think she has nearly as many problems as a character like Dory has, but she too suffers from weak ass normal attacks. Unlike many of other of these characters, she can actually infuse her own quite easily and fairly well. The only problem is there's no reason to do so. She's actually better at infusing other people and switching to other characters than playing for herself, which is really sad because she's got this really cool shield slam and then this basic basically throwing spear attack where she more just kind of stabs with it, but it also is kind of for throwing it. I interpret it as she's throwing it, but you know, whichever way you'd want to interpret it, I just think it looks pretty damn cool and feels really good to use, except, you know, in practicality, because the damage sucks. Quick mention here for Layla, who while her attack chain is nothing extraordinarily special, the final attack is kind of neat, the sound effect's really nice, and I just find it oddly satisfying to attack with, yet once again, HP scaling character, no self-infusion, just not really much of a reason to actually do 
it. Lastly, we have Dia. Now, for whatever reason, they clearly didn't design Dia to be some prominent on-field damage dealer, for whatever reason, even though she's known as the strongest Aramite, she's a brawler, or mercenary, whatever, blah, blah, blah. She's now a support. A support that happens to have some really nice-looking auto attacks. With a powerful and visceral-feeling sword tackle as her third attack and a finisher punch, her auto attack chain looks and feels really cool. Emphasis on feels because in practicality, it is absolutely terrible. With low damage values comparatively to most of their Claymore users, nothing special about her attack speed, it leads to a very underwhelming experience. Combine those factors with no HP scaling in her kit whatsoever for her normal attacks and her C1 leaving normal attacks off of the bonus list, it just paints the picture of a character who was clearly never meant to use their attacks, and that's totally fine because many characters in this game are the exact same way. They are not designed with their normal attacks in mind. I just think that many would have agreed that it would have seemed actually more appropriate if Dia was based around hitting things with her normal attacks, which were alternating constantly between hitting things with her claymore and then hitting things with her meat mittens. I just gotta imagine that a lot of people at this point are probably thinking about finally C6ing their Bennett or getting Bennett to C6 just to infuse Dia's attacks so they can use her more. Dia is just a particularly sad one because her demo, everything about her character, what we knew about her from the story, made us probably all think that she was going to be a formidable on-field fighter. And instead what we got is a declawed kitten, so you know, it's a little bit sad. Not every character that has some kind of interesting attack or gimmick ends up being on a list like this. We have ones that didn't, like Hazo, or every Catalyst user due to their permanent infusion always allowing them to do some kind of elemental reaction related shenanigans. To me, it just seems like every time we get one that's really interesting, it's dooming them. It's like saying that this character is not going to use this. Unless you're, again, playing co-op or just don't care about playing optimal. Maybe you just play on world level four forever. A quick reminder here at the end that my last video about character popularity, I made a poll asking people to vote on their favorite and least favorite Genshin Impact characters. If you could please go down into the comments or the description of this video, I'm going to link that form there again. If you could vote on it, it'd be greatly appreciated. The more votes, the more interesting the results are. In any case, thank you to you for watching and thank you to my members and my patrons for supporting supporting me as always. And remember, please vote on that poll because if you get mad that your character isn't higher on the list, you only have yourself to blame. Attaboy! <laughs>